Would you love to learn how to make egg roll in a jar with dehydrated foods and make it convenient so that you're not having to do all that chopping and prepping? Let me show you the way that I stock my pantry very quickly when I need to and how we're gonna turn all of our dehydrated vegetables into egg roll in a jar. So let's go get started. Come on, come on. Big tip on getting your pantry stocked up really quickly. Take advantage of the convenience foods from your grocery store. Vegetables that are frozen have already been blanched, ready to go for you. Just pour them on a tray to go. Now, the uh, head of cabbage right now is not on sale, not even remotely close. And my time plus the cost of the cabbage, this is way cheaper than doing cabbage myself. The same goes for the carrots, especially if I'm trying to make this mix that we're doing fast to get a bunch of them on the shelf at one time. My time is worth money too, and I'm gonna go with these. Another quick tip is that when you do onions, going from frozen onions to de dehydrating actually helps reduce the smell somewhat. It's not, gonna, it's not going to eliminate it, but it will reduce. So another tip I have is to go ahead and measure your packages to know how much it is fresh so that you can make notations here. So I'm going to say the volume before I start this is about five cups, and I'll put a, an indication of how much this is after. And then notes to myself are that we're going to do egg roll in a bowl. Go ahead and get these started. I am going to go ahead and pile on a bag per tray. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is going to shrink up a lot while it dries. If this was a food that would not shrink up a lot, I would not pile it on this heavily because it would need, um, it would need that space. So I'm going to do one bag per tray on the machine. So now I want to stop and talk a little bit about blanching. Blanching vegetables is recommended for things like carrots and potatoes and any root vegetable and including cabbage. It's not a root vegetable, but it's one of the vegetables included to blanch before dehydrating to help stop the enzymatic process that can happen that turns your food bad in the pantry. So it could be one reason why your carrots turn white, that your cabbage turns just bleh, you lose the color in it. Um, it's one of those things that helps stop the enzymes from continually making your food go bad in the pantry. Not everything has to be blanched, and I will give you a link in the description box below that tells you all of the foods that need to be blanched and for how long, uh, but it's important. But this time I'm not doing it because I know this is gonna get used up really quickly, so I don't need to worry about blanching ahead of time. We're gonna be good. If you plan on storing this for more than a month, blanch it before you start. Same thing goes with your onions. This bag is probably the equivalent of one large onion. Uh, it's a 10 ounce bag, does it say? Does not say that it's equivalent to a certain amount of onions, but still, you measure it with your heart anyway. So we're gonna make a notation that that is about three cups worth. Yeah, it's got a little carrot mixed in, but that's okay. This is also going to shrink a lot, so I'm gonna put two bags on here knowing that I can make that adjustment later. There we go. So for my onions, there they are. So for onions, I'll make a notation here about frozen. One 10 ounce bag equals three cups. Hi, in case we haven't met, I'm Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry where we talk about dehydrating and other ways to preserve food to put into your pantry for long-term storage for you and your family for whatever you need it for. And the book that you see me using during this process is the dehydrating journal that I've got. It's available on my website. I'll click down below and up here in the iCards. There is a version that is the dehydrating basics in journal, which covers all of how to dehydrate plus the journal. This is just the journal portion in case you don't need to learn the hows and whys, but you just want to make records for yourself. It's available down below. And from our handy dandy temperature uh, chart, we know that we're going to vegetables. So 125F, 52C or lower. And for our time, I just always set it ahead because I don't go by what the timer says. I go by how th things are dry. This is not gonna take 19 hours. I just set it ahead and I check while we're drying. All right, let's start first with our carrots. Here is what the piled on version of that bag of carrots looks like. They are small, they have gotten really dry and crinkly, and if those longer sticks that you found in the bag aren't gonna be good for you for maybe doing carrot cakes or anything like that, you can always break these up easily by just getting them smaller. This is what it equals to now done. So you have, it's between three quarters and one cup of dried carrot shreds. So that's your equivalency. 
So you just get your, your wherever you take your notes, uh, four cups fresh uh, equals one cup dried. All right, let's get these stored up. Okay, our onions, here they are. This is what they look like. They are crisp, they will break up easily, all dry, okay? And they equal approximately three quarters of a cup. Does it have to be exact? It does not. There's rarely a time that you need to have dehydrated foods exact because cooking, you can add as much or as little as you want. Okay, so here is our cabbage after it's done. It is dry, brittle, it falls apart like that. Um, I measured this out to about two cups of dried, which is about 34 milliliters for those of you who need to, to do milliliters. I'll try to remember to start doing that in the future. We're gonna go ahead and store this. Okay, so we're just gonna roll this up. Okay, I want to talk about conditioning this again. Typically, when you would dry food, as soon as you take it out and it's cold off, you would put it in a jar that gives you some room to move and you would shake it every day like this, once a day for five to six days. Five to seven days. If it's fruit, I go a little longer. If it's not, shorter. What you're doing is looking for any moisture buildup in your jar where things are clumping together or they're sticking to the jar that don't come off easily. But as I said, these had so much extra time to dry, I'm not conditioning in this particular step, but that's how you do it. Okay, our ingredients today are going to be um, garlic, ginger, black pepper, green powder. Then we have carrot, dried carrots, dried cabbage mix, and then dried onions. Some sesame oil, liquid aminos, or you can use low sodium soy sauce. And for the meat, we are going to use dehydrated ground beef. Now you see I'm putting dehydrated beef into my pan. You can use any kind of beef that you want. You can use freeze dried, frozen, fresh. You can use sausage, you can use chicken, you can use tofu. Any of those things that you wanna use are fine, that's up to you. But just a word of advice, dehydrated beef is not considered reliably shelf stable. But I can tell you the ground beef that I've been using, I've had on the shelf for about 10 months now and it's been fine. The problem is any fat that's in there can turn rancid over time, which is why it's not recommended to be a reliable shelf stable food and should be kept in the freezer to take out when you need it to travel, like for bike, biking, for hiking, backpacking, camping, or anything like that, or for some short-term meals in a jar, just like our, our egg roll in a jar. So while I'm gonna keep this on the shelf for a little while, I'm not gonna think about keeping this particular version on my shelf forever unless I use freeze dried or unless I take out the meat from this and just store all of the vegetables and the seasonings and they can just be added to whatever meat that you'd like to use. And to get this started off, we're gonna use about a cup of water. Eh, maybe about a cup because what we're gonna do is we're rehydrating things but we're also gonna steam. So I wanna make sure that I have enough water, but we can add more water down the road if we think that you need it. And because I'm using dried beef, this is why I'm adding so much more water. If you were using fresh or frozen, you wouldn't need to do all this. And so we're gonna use all of our ground beef. And I'm just gonna let this settle a little bit by itself with some of my spices my oil, and my soy sauce, or liquid aminos, whatever you use. And you can use low sodium, you can use regular, you can just use whatever is normal for you. And we add a little bit extra because our family likes it a little bit more like that. And what I have found is when you're going with dehydrated ground beef, it never bulks up the way fresh does. So I usually end up having to use a little bit more 
um, to make sure that we're all fed well. And the same goes with the, the cabbage. When you use a, a recipe, most of them are calling for about three cups of uh, slaw if you do cabbage or if you do a coleslaw mix. However, I have a family of five that I'm having to feed. That's never enough. So I just add as much as I think I need to add. And then we also have some things that would go along with it. All right, so our beef has just enough liquid to rehydrate it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid because I do want this cabbage to go ahead and steam. This is what it looks like in a jar. Isn't it pretty? And of course, I will have the recipe for this on the website, down in the comments below, probably up here on the iCards too, so you can just quickly link to it. Then we're adding our cabbage, carrots, onions. I'm going to just mix all this up. And looking at it, I already know I need to add a little bit more water. And I'm going to let this rehydrate, warm up, and then we're gonna let it steam. And occasionally we'll pick up the lid we're gonna let it steam like this. And then occasionally we'll come in and just mix it up a little bit and keep going. And let it steam some more. Something I wanna mention as we go through this last steam is you can also use hoisin sauce. You can add a little sugar to this if you want. Um, there are all sorts of things that you can add to this. You can add more carrots, you can add um, celery, you can add any kind of vegetable that you want in here. You can even add broccoli if you wanted to as well. All right, here we go. This is what it looks like. Now, the texture of this is gonna be more chewy then it is crunchy because we're not doing this from fresh. And then you can still steam this to whatever you prefer as far as the tenderness of the vegetables that are in here. Uh, I know my dad prefers things that are really, really soft, uh, but I like things with a little bit of texture to them. So we just like I'll microwave his serving of it to soften it up a little bit for him. Uh, but this is what it looks like when we serve this up. To serve this up, you can add some fresh chopped green onions if you'd like and some sesame seeds and enjoy. Now, if you wanna see some other meals in a jar that I do, check this video right here. And until I see you again next time, and remember, nevertheless, she preserved. Now, let me go eat my lunch. Go, go.